You're watching Live1.tv from New York. This is the Capital Mouse House. On today's program, I talk with attorney George Desaias about the 2022 midterm elections. All right, and you've tuned in to Live1.tv. I'm here with my good friend and co-host, George Desaias. George, please. Glad to be here today. Yeah, I'm glad you're here too. And we're taking a little uh, time out from some of our legal programming. We're in front of the Capitol Mouse House. We are, you know, right up, the 2022 elections are right upon us. They call them the midterm elections. You're going to see a lot of changes in the House behind us here. Are you rooting for anybody? <laughs> That's a difficult question. I'm going <coughs> to wait to get closer to the elections. I mean, I'm a registered Democrat. I used to be a Republican. Mm -hmm. I do cross lines sometimes when I like the candidate. For the most part, I generally vote Democrat. And the reason why is I just feel the Democrats are more likely to pass a bill that helps the poor and the middle class, whereas the Republicans are more about big business mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. And today, as some incredible things happened in New York, the Attorney General, apparently Letitia James, has uh, just started a lawsuit, I think approximately $250 million against the Trump organization, including Trump himself, his daughter, and his sons, uh, one of his daughters. So uh, Trump's gonna have his hands full uh, with legal matters. It's not the only legal tie-up he's got at the moment. Well, it's becoming pretty clear lately that Donald Trump is being seen by the Democrats as a threat because, uh, and the Democrats are not thinking properly, in my opinion, strategically, because they're creating a martyr out of Trump. Trump has have half the country, maybe more, supporting him. And uh, most of the people that support him are people that are frustra frustrated with the way the political system is working. They don't like, they don't trust the government and uh, that's why they're supporting Trump. And here we have the Democrats continuing this fight against Trump, which I think it's going to backfire. I think uh, Trump has a very good shot of getting elected again, unless if they wind up arresting him. <laughs> but, but even if they arrest him, I think probably somebody like DeSantis will win and then pardon Trump. Uh -huh. So it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen. Right. Now, a, a few months ago, people were talking about how in the elections, which I believe are November 8th, which is about, what, six weeks, five or six weeks away, November 8th, people a year ago said, um, you know, it looks like we're going to have a red wave. And for people who don't know, the Democrats are the color blue, okay, and the Republicans are the color red. People were saying there would be a red wave this year until the Supreme Court came down with their changing of Roe versus Wade. And now all of a sudden people are saying not so fast. The, we just went through a summer, the summer of the angry young girl. And uh, the angry young girl can vote. And you will see a lot of people, and not just young people, but uh, people who support pro-choice in abortion issues, who, 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 who try to stop that red wave. So it's unclear to me. It isn't a, a given that there's automatically going to be a red wave because of the because of the crime, which is what everybody felt. Now we have we have this issue of the Supreme Court as well. So I think the the country is definitely very divided. I don't think the abortion issue is going to determine the election. I really don't believe that because there's a lot of women that don't believe in abortion also. I mean, uh, and nowadays abortion is not that big of an issue because you have that morning after pill. Girls, do, women really do not need to be getting pregnant. There's mm -hmm. a lot of alternatives to it. I don't think it's a major issue anymore. And, and maybe Roe v. Wade is a little bit outdated because when it came out, there was no possibility of viability of a fetus until a certain stage in pregnancy. Now with science, I mean, viability is possible in a test tube. So, right. you know, that baby has a right to life. I mean, I think eventually it's going to be where a woman is pregnant. 
instead of aborting the baby, they can actually take the baby and raise it in a test tube and give it up for adoption. There are so many people that can't have children that would love to adopt a baby. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I personally, uh, you know, I'm a Democrat. Um, I, you know, as a Christian, Orthodox Christian, to me, abortion is a sin. But then again, as a Democrat, I also believe you have the right to sin. You mm -hmm. know, you don't want the government telling you when you can sin, when you can't sin. So a woman has a right of privacy. That's my opinion over the body. But Roe v. Wade may actually be outdated, and I don't think it's as significant as people think. There are other problems going on in the country that are much more significant. And the main thing is that crime is out of control in this country. It's the only country in the world where you have mass shootings every day. You know, you're sending your kids to school, you're afraid that somebody's going to shoot them in school. Somewhere in the country, there's a shooting either in a school or in a mall every day. This doesn't happen anywhere else in the world other than the United States. We need, uh, we need to get this crime under control. We need to make America a safe country again. Make America safe. Yes, make America safe again. Right. <laughs> wow. That is incredible. Now, another big issue that people are talking about is apparently the Biden administration is sending some money over to the IRS so that they can focus their agents on their taxation efforts. I have a problem with that. Uh, I voted for Biden and uh, I voted for Obama. Obama audited me in 2008. Yeah. It was a very stressful time period in my life. And I realized, I learned a lot about the IRS. I mean, I paid off what they assessed against me. Uh, but I learned a lot about the IRS. I learned that they generally don't go after Wall Street because Wall Street hires the best of lawyers and they really can't afford to. They can't afford to be in litigation for a long time. They don't go after the poor because the poor get paid by paycheck and their taxes are pretty obvious. The IRS goes after the small businessman. The small businessman is the backbone of this country. This country was built on the small businessman. The $89 billion that Biden gave to the IRS is a ticket to audit me again and to audit every small businessman. And I have a problem with that. It's time we got rid of the IRS, in my opinion. It's time we had some kind of a flat tax. Anything you buy or sell, anytime you get money, the government gets paid right off the bat enough of taxes it's sometimes called the consumptive tax yes yes I, I believe in that now uh, in my mind you know I think that Trump would be a good candidate for this because he has IRS problems and he makes it, it makes it a tempting thought for me to vote for him in 2024 simply because I know that what uh, the Biden administration is doing now is going to be very oppressive to the small businessman yeah, just terrible. Really just terrible. <clears throat> it would be nice to end the nightmare uh, on people. And what about other New York politics things going? Have you been to any of the Republican or Democrat or Libertarian meetings? So I actually ran for office back in 2004. I was in the Democratic ticket for councilman for the town of Hempstead. I ran against Ed Ambrosino, who wound up winning the election. I got like 37 or 40 percent of the vote. The party did not help me at all. I was all on my own. At one fundraiser, I raised $18,000 and I bought a lot of signs. I put them all over the town. I came very close to winning. I was on News 12 a few times. So I understand a little bit about the political process. Mm. Um, prior to being a Democrat, I was a Republican. But again, I'm mostly Democrat because I believe in you know Democratic Party. For example, with the coronavirus, Initially, when the virus came out, Trump, a lot of people don't realize this, but Trump gave a big tax break to Wall Street, no question asked. He gave them trillions of dollars, trillions of uh, stimulus, and the Democrats got mad, and Pelosi and the Democrats put together stimulus for, for the average person, and, and people were able to get unemployment. Uh, small businesses like myself got the PPP payroll incentive. We got low interest loans, which was fantastic for us. That was definitely a benefit that I benefited from that was primarily given by the Democrats and constantly reduced by the Republicans. Uh, but on the other hand, the, the Democrats are getting a little bit out of hand, uh, a little bit too much to the left. Uh, we're losing uh, the importance of morality in the home. Uh, 
the importance of religion and society. People are losing their values. They're losing a sense of who they are. I think things are just getting a little bit out of control. It's good that we have a two-party system. You know, you can't have a one-party system because then you'll have a dictatorship. You need a two-party system, but they ne need to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also the Democrats are getting a little bit out of control with going after Trump. For example, the files that Trump had, I'm willing to bet that every president has had files that they've taken out of the White House. Probably the government has taken them back, but it never hit the media. But this is hitting the media. It's being publicized. And it's not good to embarrass a former president, in my opinion. Whether or not you agree with Trump, he was the president. And we need to work with Trump as Democrats, not against him. We need to have the parties work together again. We need to come to the table together. And if we can't come to the table together, then there's going to be a revolution eventually, because this is really getting out of control and trying to make an example of Trump, you know, because he's a threat. Obviously, there's something politically motivated here. It's starting to become obvious. And the Democrats are going to wind up making a martyr out of Trump. They're contributing to the destruction of this country. I mean, Reagan didn't do that. You know, you heard of Reagan Democrats. Reagan caused Democrats to cross the line and become Republicans. Mm -hmm. You know, he had that kind of charming personality. Clinton had the similar thing. Clinton made a lot of Republicans voted for Clinton. And, uh, you know, because he was good at getting people coming together at the table. And that's what we need. We need the president to be able to do that. Trump wasn't able to do that. I don't know if it was primarily Trump's fault or the way the country has become very divisive in terms of political opinions. People are taking things too personally. You know, mm -hmm. you should not take politics and religion personally. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody that's a Republican should entertain voting for a Democrat. And everybody who's a Democrat should entertain voting for a Republican because right. this is the political system. We have to work together. There are things about the Republicans that I like, and there's things about the Democrats that I like. And people are always free to change their mind. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how about Mayor Adams? What do you think of our New York mayor? How's well, he doing, George? I'm not a New York City resident. Uh, I think he's a good speaker, but uh, if I was a New York City resident, even though I'm a Democrat, I probably would have voted for Curtis uh, Sliwa. Sliwa. And the reason why is because the biggest issue facing New York City right now is crime. People are getting slashed and shot on subways for no reasons, and nobody's doing anything about it. Mm -hmm.